So my name is Emily Cruz and I am a teacher, a high school social science teacher. I teach ACE psychology as well as world history for English language learners. The words that were said to me when I was a young, impressionable youth was, you will never graduate high school, you will end up pregnant, and your brother will end up in a gang. And those were the words of my father. Um, I say these things not to inspire pity from people, but to remind people that you have all of these sayings, all of these assumptions working against you when you are Hispanic or you are a minority and maybe your family situation was not as traditional raised by a single mother for example like myself um, but you can beat the statistic so when I was in school it became a safe haven for me um, starting in elementary school I always pretended not to enjoy school but I actually loved it I ended up doing rolling dual enrolling in high school to the point where I was able to finish with my AA degree before I even graduated high school. So it only took me two years to get through my bachelor's degree at Florida State University. Go Nulls. Um, so I did end up graduating high school. I have not started my family yet. Um, my brother did not end up in a gang. He's actually playing football at Tusculum College in Tennessee at the moment where he is studying math education as we speak. Um, so we had all of these things working against us, people who were supposed to be our family that really cared about us, insinuating that we would not have a successful future because of our scenario. Um, given that my mom and my father were not together, my mom had to raise us by ourselves, um, and being Hispanic in general, you have all these statistics working against you, but we completely divide all of that as we continue to um, defy all of the statistics, the boundaries, we continue to push forward. And now we are in a position where we want to educate other children to do the same thing. So one thing that is apparent in this school and many other schools in Florida and across the nation is that there is a gap between our low socioeconomic students and that correlation that it has with minority students like myself, for example. Um, I make it very apparent in my classroom that I have the same expectations of my students as I would of students who are from a more financially affluent family, for example, or from students who are not a minority and they have maybe more opportunities than students here at my own school. There might be this disadvantage, but because of your heritage, which is strong and bold and full of culture and color, because of the experiences that you may have had as a young child like myself, you are just as capable, if not even more capable, of achieving the same things as other students because you have the experiences, the life stories, the life experience and wisdom to carry you through. I love being able to be in my classroom and although I'm of Puerto Rican descent, I have a lot of students from um, Mexico or Cuba and various places in the Caribbean, including Haiti. One thing that we really get to bounce off of is food, for example, whether it's Haitian food, because I have a lot of Haitian students, or um, Cuban food and how that's related to Puerto Rican food. You know, we're both in the Caribbean, you know, we're neighbors, um, and how we get to have that culture, cultural exchange and learn more from each other as well. So I think a lot of the perceptions, especially in the media and even carried by our own government, maybe at this time, is that Hispanics, for example, are of a lower quality of person, which sounds ridiculous to me because when you have people like myself, we are so resilient. Hispanics are resilient. Um, my family in Puerto Rico has to recover and right there, it's all about resilience. It's all about bouncing back and getting back on your feet. That's one prime example, not just Puerto Ricans, but any Hispanic, for example. 
there's resilience. Um, there is strength and boldness in your culture. We are not a quiet culture as collectively as Hispanics. We are not the least bit quiet. If anything, we are loud and proud always, verdad? Yeah. So um, I think that should be the perception that we carry ourselves with. And I think that's going to be the direction. If we carry ourselves with this boldness, with, with this flavor, with this resilience, with this pride, then we will better be able to show everyone that we are resilient and proud, as opposed to damaged or incapable of accomplishing all the same things that everyone else can. In this political environment, we um, currently have an administration that might appear it is more for or against certain races, certain ethnicities, certain skin colors. So in a time like this, it is very important to be able to embrace each other as minorities and embrace each other as Hispanics, no matter where you come from. It's, we do have distinct cultures, you know? Puerto Ricans are a little different from Cubans. Uh, Puerto Ricans are a little bit different from Mexicans, but no matter what it comes down to, we are all of Latin descent, right? We are Latinos, we are Hispanic, and we need to, in this time especially, when people might not be looking at Hispanics very favorably, it's important to understand our similarities more than we look at our differences. And to use that as a uniting factor to back each other up and see each other as Hispanic brothers and sisters, as opposed to just Cubans or just Puerto Ricans or just Mexicans or etc.